my website right now and download my free course on alternate picking mastery. It contains five essential exercises that will take you to alternate picking mastery faster than you can imagine. And then I've included my method of how to lay out a practice plan in just one to two minutes that will absolutely boost your results like nothing you ever tried before. So go download it right now. It's free. Hey, uh, a question about you know boring practice, uh, and I should say that if you have any questions, please post them underneath these videos, and I'll answer them in, in future videos. Uh, I did a video about never uh, have boring practice again. You know, never be bored when you practice. And it was this cool comment about you know the most boring thing in the world is to practice alternate picking with a metronome. You know, just sit there, right? And it's so boring that most people try to push for speed, right? They try to, uh, because then you have something, let me just adjust the microphone here. Uh, then they have something that they can, you know, it, it becomes a little bit dramatic when you practice like, okay, uh, I'm just trying to, <laughs> and that's mu much more fun than doing it in the most effective way, which is, which is playing, I'm just gonna repeat that whole phrase, which is playing it as fast as you can while staying totally relaxed and accurate you know, and precise in what you do. And then if you do that, that's slower than most people think. <laughs> and if you do that, then uh, you'll absolutely, the, the tempo will increase. But the cool thing is, it's gonna, it's gonna feel like you, it's not harder. It just increases naturally because you become better at it. Until fast is, is, is the same pattern in the body as playing slow. But that's not the point. The point is, it's super boring to sit and stare at your metronome and then do thousands of repetitions of the same pattern. That's what it takes to become really good at alternate picking or anything on the guitar. And the metronome is a really cool tool because it teaches you to be in time, to be accurate and precise when it comes to timing. But it's super boring. That's why I really recommend that you, point one, as you use the metronome to build accuracy uh, at a relatively low level of speed, and then you use the TV, you know, you watch sitcoms or educational videos as you do the same pattern. But then you go back to the metronome all the time to build that unconscious almost uh, ability to practice while you talk or watch TV. You know, you practice so long with the metronome that it becomes a pattern that runs in that special part of the brain that automates driving a car, for instance, where you're not even conscious about what you do. Um, the same thing happens here, that you can build that pattern, but it's not necessarily fast. But once you build that pattern, you can go on forever, right? While talking to friends, you can turn down the sound and then do it, right? And you can watch TV with your family, or and you're practicing as you do it. And you're not doing it, and you're not pushing for speed, because that would make you focus, and that's a totally, because you just play a lot of mistakes, and or do a lot of mistakes, and those become built into your technique, and then you wonder why, when you have some degree of sloppy, fast technique, why it sounds like, you know, uh, <laughs> why it doesn't sound good. And But here's the key, really, to to uh, to practicing with the metronome, to pra practicing anything. And that is the fact that if there's anything the human brain absolutely loves, it's games. You know, just think about it. Just think about how, how enthusiastic we can get about a game that's about nothing, basically, right? A football game or something. We got two teams and, you know, all we, we are in the team, we're playing football, and we get all up there, like totally passionate and enthusiastic. We're even willing to get hurt, right? And we don't care, we just get up again. We bruise our knee, oh, and then we get up again, right? Because it's just, it's so built into us, that, that game, um, you know, state that we can get into. It reminds us so much of life. <laughs> you know, there's something we want in a game. We wanna win, right? And there are opponents on the playing field, and those are the ones that keep us from scoring. And why do we need to score? Well, because scoring means that if you can score more goals than the op opposing team, then you can win. And winning just means it's just a story about what the game is about. And then if you get to do that, then you win. And then we become happy, right? But it's not about anything. Then you can put money in the prize or you know hold a gold trophy above your head. But basically winning is about the glory, right? What is the glory? What are you talking about? 
Just, you know, imagine a bunch of cows staring at some people who just goes on about, ah, and 30,000 people on a stadium or 100,000 that just goes, yeah, they scored, right? It's like, bam, we can just ignite ourselves in that way. So what do we need in order to turn the guitar practicing into, yeah, right, as we practice? We need to have a result we want to achieve. And that has to be specific. Because in a game, if you didn't know in a football game when you really won or not, or if that was up to discussion, then you wouldn't be as engaged because you wouldn't know when to go. You wouldn't know when you've actually moved closer to your result or your, you know, because you don't know what it's about, right? And, and that is the first mistake we make when we practice guitar. We don't know what it's about. We just start practicing. Instead of saying, okay, I want to learn the, this scale. And to what level do I want to learn it? I want to learn all the 5K chips of the pentatonic scale. And then we, immediately we go right to, I want to have that total freedom to play across the neck, like bam, 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 right? But that's winning the tournament. That's a result so big that, you know, you require a, to win a couple of games first. But when you're, when you're in the game, you don't think about winning the trophy of the entire tournament. You just think about the next goal, right? You just think about putting the ball in the net. That's all you think about. So you need to define, okay, so that's a cool vision of you know being able to play that pentatonic scale and just go all over the neck and, and have no limitation, right? It's all there, it's like it's second nature. That's a cool tournament, right, to win. And you can absolutely do it because the opponents are very predictable in this game. So secondly, you need to say, what is scoring? You know, oh, sorry, you need to say, what is winning a game? Well, that could be winning, learning one, one shape to the degree to which you want to learn the, you know, win the tournament. So if you want to learn to be effortless across the neck, you should first learn to be effortless in one shape, right? You just be able to play and you can jump from one note to another totally. You can just see it there, right there, all right? It's, it's effortless completely. It's no effort at all. You don't have to, oh, let me see Western notes. It's just bam right there. So that's the first mission, right? That's the game. That is winning the match. Right? So what is scoring then? Well, scoring, what is that? It's putting in the time, right? What if, what if I could put in, you know, two hours of just, you know, going back and forth and playing in or learning that shape? What if I could write it down on, on a piece of paper and draw out that shape every single day for the next week, right? Perhaps a hundred times, a thousand times. You, you, you set that up because that's part of creating the project. You say, okay, how much can I put into this of just nailing that one shape and really becoming so good at it that it's, it's effortless. You know, play without looking. What strategies can I find to learn scales? Perhaps visit guitarmastery.net and look into the Fretboard Freedom Program. Who knows? <laughs> but what strategies can I get? How can I amp up for this challenge, for this match, right? Because that's what we do as well, right? We get our gear together, we get the right clothes on. When we're playing football, we get ready, right? So you get ready and then you hit it and you say, I want to win this match. And winning a match is then scoring enough goals, right? And what is scoring enough goals? It's, you know, practicing this with my guitar for 30 minutes each day, but then writing the pattern down 100 times each day or 20 or 30, whatever it, that is, right? Oh, I score again. I just wrote it out 10 times without looking, right? Or I took the first two shapes and went back and forth like that. Whatever, whatever strategy you come up with or get access to, that's what you use. And then you say, what, what do I need to do each day to have a day where I scored? And then you score, score, score. See, for you can do seven in a row, right? And the, your whole brain and body reacts to that. It loves that. Okay, now we know what we're after. We know that winning the tournament, what that means. And it's specific. It's totally measurable. I know exactly how that looks and how that should feel, right? And I know what winning a match is. It, you know, le learning one shape to the top. And I know what scoring is. It's, you know, it's, it's doing those things each day that's going to lead me there. Okay, so let's start the week now. Right? Let's score every day. And if you don't score, well, that's just part of the match, right? You don't get, oh, I didn't score. I wanted to put the ball in the net, but then the opponents came and took it from me. You don't go like that. You just go, the second they take it from you, the ball, or, you know, the second you fail to, to score, you just go right at it again. Next day, bam, bam, bam. That's what we do in a game, right? We don't go, <laughs> as we normally do in real life. So, and once you're engaged in that, then practicing with the metronome, measuring every single increase in speed becomes a game. And I have a, a thing called the metronome game that you can also look that up here on this YouTube channel. Subscribe, first of all, then look it up. 
uh, to, to figure out, you know, what, because that was a game for me. I never just sat down and, and practiced with the metronome. I, had, I was writing stuff down and I said, okay, what can I, I went back and forth and increased the tempo, measuring everything, playing the metronome game. And it worked like, you know, because I was engaged intuitively in a game instead of just, uh, right, which can be so boring, you know, staring into a white wall, just click, click. Click. Who's willing to do that? You know, no brain is willing to do that. It's gonna sabotage you for real. It's gonna pull the plucks on your motivation for sure. But if you make it a game and say, what do I, where do I want to go in a week, and how am I going to get there? And then you start measuring, writing down every practice session, where you went to, what you did, and everything. Then it's gonna be a game inside of you because now it's specific. You know where you're going. You know what to do to get there. And that might bring you there or not. But you're testing. You're trying, right? And then you can do something else the next week to be even more effective in getting there. You really need to do this. You need to stop the haphazard picking up your guitar, practicing whatever, right? And then start really being, being focused on creating little games for yourself because you don't need 100,000 whatever in your currency. You don't need big prices. You just need to make it a game, right? Like going into a football game with your friends and it's about nothing. It's just about stuff we make up. Just so make up stuff in your head when you practice and then feel the motivation. Uh, it doesn't have to be any more complex than that, so go do it. Subscribe for more free videos. Do it. Do it now. Do it.